the context for today is very clear. Right? We're talking about software, we're talking about infrastructure, we talk about transparency. Those things happen to be my favorite topics, so we can talk about it all day. Um, when we're planning this event, I was thinking about an overarching theme, a statement, something that I can give you to really frame the mindset for today. And then it literally appeared to me, uh, as these days it happens, in a video call, of course, um, in the background of a friend of mine, his name is uh, Chris Warman, and in, in his background he had um, a statement framed, we are the ones we've been waiting for. So for today, that's the mindset that I would like to give you, um, that I would, would like you to take. Um, and I, I really want to ask you that, thank you. Um, and I really would like to ask you that today you, you really use, you use to learn, um, to understand what you can do, um, also to connect with all the people around you. I think it's very clear if you're here that you're interested in uh, resource efficient software and green coding practices, so connect with everybody around you. And tomorrow, if you like, uh, come to our boot camps and our workshops to really just try it out and see uh, what you can do. Now, usually a lot of you are probably wondering, is software really such a big deal? Now, Anna mentioned it already, transparency is a big problem. So we don't really have very, very good numbers on the environmental costs um, of software. We don't have anything reliable. But there is a certain statistics that you will see all the time um, in terms of energy growth, but also in terms of um, yeah, environmental costs um, that I put here just to, to have a, a reference point. Um, but I hope that the most of you that are here that understand something much more important which is the scaling effects of software. So if you have a, if a web application that has 10,000 active users, these 10,000 active users might generate hundreds of thousands of function calls. Those calls create a use energy. They need server capacity. They need storage capacity. I think all of you know that there is an environmental cost to it. And at software, often at scale, um, has a, a very large one. And on top of that, think about the backup systems, the monitoring systems, logging, all these things that are going on for most applications. And I think, I hope that all of you know um, that software has an environmental impact that we ought to address. Um, of course, also we live in a business world. <laughs> so most of you, I hope, or I, I think, uh, are probably not making software for pleasure. Um, so in our opinion, in order for for resource efficient software to exist, for green software to exist, there needs to be a market. And in order to have a market, we are big believers at the SDA in a transparency label. In each application having to showcase their environmental impact uh, very transparently to the users. This can be reinforced with public procurement, it can be reinforced with, with regulation, but we believe there needs to be a market for resource efficient software. Um, the blue, oops too fast. Uh, the Blue Angel that Anna mentioned already takes this a bit further because it sets actual thresholds, it sets limits, it really defines what sustainable software needs to look like, so you could look at it as the holy grail, and for us the transparency label is a step towards that holy grail. Um, to realize this vision, to realize this vision of resource efficient software, this light motif, um, we need transparency, we need this, this label, but we also need to expand a practice that is now framed as green coding, which to us is part of a much larger um, set of uh, disciplines that we need to learn. The first one being green requirements engineering. So before we build software, we should think about, do we actually need to build it? Can we, can we somehow minimize the resource usage already when defining the requirements? Jutta is nodding, that's a good sign. Um, then we have um, the discipline of, of course, programming in a resource efficient way. So when you're building software, really considering, does, do I really need that much CPU time? Do I need that much memory? Um, but then also the aspect of running applications in cloud environments or in, in data center environments. Um, yeah, even there we can still um, do a lot of optimization and really constrain the resources that an application uses. And to us, that's the practice of green software. And that in itself is a very important step towards sustainable software. Um, and I hope, honestly, that over the next couple of years we can really figure out what sustainable software is, because that also must include the social aspect, it must inc include economic aspects, it is not just environmentalism. And uh, I think, again, green software is a step towards 
sustainable software. So before I bore you to death, I come to an end. <laughs> um, you heard it before, so today marks this summit essentially marks the end of the project that we have with the German Environmental Agency, the project called Software. Um, but I see it as a beginning. And I hope that you see it as well. We hope this can be a beginning for a movement towards transparent and resource efficient software and that we can hopefully start today. Because, as I said in the beginning, remember, we are the ones we've been waiting for. <laughs>